Amen. Great song, young people. Thank you so much. It's preaching time. Take your Bibles, turn with me, please, over to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 16. Proverbs chapter number 16. When you find your place, you can stand with me. And if you have a hard time finding it, go ahead and stand anyway, so people will think you found it. Proverbs chapter 16. Thank you, young people. Beautiful song. I'm amazed that he loved me. Amen. In a day and age where we live in such an entitled society, we should never lose the joy, the amazement of the fact that God loved us. Amen. Amen. When we were yet ungodly, Christ died for us, the Bible says. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 31. The Bible says, The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. I want to preach this morning on the assets of the aged. The assets of the aged. Lord, pray that you bless the preaching of your word this morning. Lord, you know my heart, the burden on my heart, and I pray that you allow me to be able to convey that to your people. And may you be pleased and glorified in the message. In, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. I want to preach this morning to a very special group of people in our church one of my favorite groups of people in our church, and that is our senior saints, the elderly, the aged. And uh, we had the get-together yesterday. Brother Berner and I spent some time talking, fellowshipping yesterday morning, a little bit before, and uh, we were just talking about the, the ministry of the senior saints and ministering to them and trying to reach them and meet their needs and be there for them. And, and it's just a very special group of people. And a lot of people in a lot of churches look at the elderly in their church as an obstacle to innovation or an obstacle to modernization or advancement. Uh, there are churches that have literally kicked the elderly people out of the church to the curb so they could change everything, they could revamp everything, and completely walk away from the old paths. And they seem like the senior saints were the only ones in the church, unfortunately, that still thought that way and believed that way, but the Bible is clear. There is a, a, an asset in a church to having elderly people and older people. I preach to young people all the time, but I don't know that I've preached a, a message just for the seniors this morning. And uh, so uh, I'm going to do that because one of these days, those of you that are not senior saints will be if Jesus tarries is coming. Amen. I was, at the, I was at the Senior Saints Christmas luncheon yesterday. Several people asked me, are you old enough to be here? And I said, no, I'm not. But the secret to looking young is hanging out with old people, amen. So that's what I do. That's what I do. I look around this morning, I see a lot of gray hair. I see a lot of white hair. I see, I see Senior Saints and folks that have been saved and walking with God for a number of years and it's beautiful to me. I draw strength from you being here. The devil may tell you that you're not an asset. The devil may tell you that you don't have anything significant to contribute, but you being here, being in the service, is a blessing and encouragement to me. And um, older people are just a hoot to be with. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'd rather hang out with old people than young people any day of the week. You just never know what they're going to say, what they're going to do. I'm finding out the older I get, the less filters I have. Just say what you think, all right. You say, well, that offends people. When you get their age and my age, you don't care. Uh, but uh, I was thinking about this, uh, I'm reminded of this old man and his wife sitting on the front porch, just looking out over the pasture, and the old lady, she just hauled off and slapped the man right in the face, knocked him out of his rocking chair. He scrambled around on the floor on the deck of the porch, found his glasses and put them on and sat down. He looked at her and... and uh, and uh, he said, uh, she said, he said, what was that for? What was that for? She said, that was for being such a lousy kisser all these years. <laughs> they sat there for a while, and then he just hauled off and slapped her out of her chair. <laughs> she scrambled around on the floor, and she found her glasses, and found her hearing aids, and found her dentures, and put everything back together. <laughs> and she sat down, and she said, what was that for? And he said, that was for knowing the difference. I've got three things I want to show you this morning by way of introduction. I've got a lot of ground to cover. 
I got a lot on my heart this morning that God has given me for our senior saints and any senior saints that may end up watching this message or watching it live stream. Three things I notice in this text in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 31. We see, first of all, the people. The people that is being addressed, the people that are being referred to, the object of this verse, the hoary head, the Bible says. That phrase is used often in the scriptures. And it's just synonymous with someone that is aged, someone that is older in years. Whether you're gray-headed or white-headed or bald-headed, it's referring to the group of people that would fit into that description of the elderly or the aged, or as we call them here at Calvary, our senior saints. In Leviticus chapter number 19, in verse number 32, the Bible says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, and honor the face of the old man, and fear thy God. I am the Lord, and I'm still uh, of the persuasion that we ought to respect and honor our elderly. Amen. I, I tell you, I stand up when an older person comes up to me to speak to me. If I'm sitting down, I stand up and I shake their hand. I don't just sit in my seat and look up at them. I stand up and I greet them out of respect. In the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20 and verse number 29, the Bible says, the glory of young men is their strength and the beauty of old men is the gray head. Because it speaks volumes, that age, that maturity that is associated with the hoary head. I was actually, as I was researching this message, I came across an interesting bit of insight, and I, I've always felt this way. I wasn't exactly sure uh, where it came from till this morning as I was researching it. But in the book of Job, you don't have to turn over there, but in Job chapter 32, as the three friends of Job were sitting around and they were, they were saying their peace and they were, many of them were speaking words of condemnation and advice and many of them, well, they were all way off base as a matter of fact. But in Job 32, the Bible says, now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. This is in Job 32, verse four, five, and six. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu uh, answered and said, I am young and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and durst not show you mine opinion. And what I saw when I read that was here was a young man that had been taught and trained to let the elders do most of the talking. But we live in a society today where all the young people think they have all the answers. Not only do they not have all the answers, they don't even know the questions. And we need to recognize and respect our senior saints and I love it when they're here at church. I love it when I get to sit down with them and spend time with them. The Bible here is talking in our text. The people that is being addressed here, referred to as those that are described as the hoary head. We live in a society where the contribution of the older generation is no longer respected. In fact, we're seeing it happen more and more, pulling down statues of those that honor the statesmen and soldiers and generals and warriors and those that made a significant contribution to our country. It is a shame and a disgrace that we would dishonor the memory of those older Americans that made this nation great. But that's just a sign of the times. In Isaiah chapter number three, he said in verse four and five, I'll give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them and the people shall be oppressed every one by another and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. That's a sign of a society that is, re, that is, in, is de degenerating when you've got a group of young people that dishonor and mock and make fun of the older and the elderly. One of these days, if the Lord tears is coming, those of us that are not yet in that group will be. We'll know what it's like for people to look down on us and look down on you. They think because you're older, think because you're feeble and weak that you're no longer significant and that is far, far from the truth. There's an asset to the aged that we're gonna look at this morning. We see in our text the people, the hoary head. Then we see the prestige in that verse. The hoary head, the Bible says, is a crown of glory. It's a symbol of prestige. There's a, something honorable about that. There's a crown of glory for the aged and it's referred to as their hoary head. 
In fact, another place talks about the crown. Proverbs 17, 6 says children's children are the crown of old men. Grandchildren. Aren't they wonderful? And I've heard many of you say it. If we'd have known how great they were, we'd have had them first. Right. Grandchildren is God's reward for not killing your son-in-law. Amen. <laughs> but though the grandchildren are a crown, there's another crown that I believe this is talking about. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, 8, and 9, says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And it goes on to say, with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. What was that crown of glory? Wisdom. And when the Bible says the hoary head is a crown of glory, I believe it is synonymous with wisdom. That the older people, the older saints, and can I say this, and I believe you'll agree with me, even those that are not saved many times, the unbelievers, the older ones, have more wisdom, unfortunately, than a lot of people that say they're saved. Just something about the way that they think and the way they look and their worldview and the way they're able to, to draw conclusions based on facts that seemingly the young people today cannot do. They cannot think for themselves. But I believe that crown of glory in that verse is referring to the wisdom that comes with the hoary head. So we see the people, we see the prestige, but then thirdly in this verse we see the parameters. The Bible says the hoary head is a crown of glory, watch this, if it be found in the way of righteousness. The Bible's clear, not just any hoary head is a crown of glory. Come on now. This only applies to those aged men and aged women that be found, the Bible says, in the way of righteousness. We would all have to agree this morning there's nothing more repulsive than an old woman with a foul mouth. There's nothing that gets under my skin anymore than to see an older lady in town, gray hair, white hair, cursing and swearing her kids and, and, and with a filthy, foul mouth. That's disgusting, it's repulsive. There's nothing more shameful than an old man with a roving eye and a filthy, perverted mind. So the Bible's very clear, the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. Cursing, bitter, hateful, mean, older people have squandered away their influence and their right to be respected for their age. Just because a person's old doesn't mean they have a crown of glory. Come on now. I wanted to say this this morning by way of introduction. The aged that fit the parameters that we find in our text this morning are an asset. They're an asset to society. They're an asset to the church. They're an asset to the ministry and to the work of God. I want to give you three things this morning that I believe that the aged bring to the table. The assets of the aged. Number one, the asset of their experience. The asset of their experience. I'm thinking about what David said in Psalm chapter number 37. I love this verse. Our family sings a song about this. In Psalm 37, verse 25, David said, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. What was he saying? He was saying, I've experienced God's provision and God's working in my life. And I can stand here as a testimony of an old man. I was young and now I'm old and I have never seen God fail his people let them down. I can say praise the Lord for the experiences of the aged that many times with their testimony, they reinforce what we read and what we hear from the word of God. Not that the word of God needs affirmation or reinforcement, but it is a blessing when we see that those that have been walking with God, those that have been saved for a number of years, and they sit up and testify, and they say, my experience has taught me that the word of God is true, and God is right. You can trust God. You can trust his word. You can trust his promises. I believe there are some things that the aged have experienced that only time can produce. In Job chapter number 12, in verse 13 and 12 and 13, it says, with the ancient is wisdom and in length of days, understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. With the ancient is wisdom and in length of days, understanding. We have a song we used to sing a lot, farther along, We'll know all about it. And sometimes we won't understand until we get to heaven. 
But I really believe a lot of our senior saints, a lot of our older Christians have lived long enough for some of the things that maybe didn't make sense when they were younger, now it's starting to make sense. They're starting now to understand why the Bible says, ask for the old paths and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul because there's a generation of people today that are not interested in the old paths. They're not interested in the ancient landmarks, but you ask a lot of these senior saints and they'll tell you, hey, I know now why God said ask for the old paths and walk therein. Where is the good way? And you shall find rest for your soul. Some things you just cannot improve on. The world keeps trying to improve on everything from technology to methods and philosophies, but you cannot improve on the things that God has ordained. And a lot of senior saints have lived long enough to be able to, through the test of time, be an experience of a testimony to those of us that are younger. There might be somebody sitting here this morning, maybe you're questioning some things. Maybe you're questioning why we do certain things, but when you get older, you say, hey, it makes perfect sense to me now. And I'm grateful for the older men of God that have, their experience has helped me. I mean, I've said it many times from the pulpit that we have older preachers come in here. I book them for revival on purpose. Not just to stand up here and preach. Not just to stand up here and share the word of God. But I enjoy spending time with them in my office. I enjoy spending time with them at the table, picking their brain and drawing from their years of experience and listening to these older men talk about things that God has done for them and with them and through them. That helps me. I don't understand why so many younger preachers today are avoiding the older generation. They gravitate to guys their same age. That's just ridiculous. It's foolish. It's foolish. The old preachers and the old missionaries and the old evangelists that have served and walked with God have experienced his moving and his working and they've got stories to tell and it's an asset. As a matter of fact, we got a missions conference coming up in March. We have scheduled, first time I've ever done anything like this, I've scheduled a retired missionary lady, Sister Margaret Stringer, served in, over in, in New Guinea for 40 years, starting in the 60s, in the 60s. I'm talking about they were cannibals, running around naked over there in the jungles. She's already retired. She's got white hair, and I've booked her. She's flying up here to stand behind this pulpit on Wednesday night and Thursday night and share testimonies and experiences of God working and moving in New Guinea in the 60s and the 70s. I've got her scheduled to speak to our chapel on that Thursday morning because I want our school children to hear and see the experiences of the aged that have been with God and known God and seen God working in their life. I place a high, high value on the experiences of God's men. I love listening to older men of God sit around and talk. They can talk about whatever they want to talk about. I love listening to it. When Brother Bearden was here, Brother Bearden sat in our office and every morning I'd have the staff come in. We normally just meet and talk a little bit and pray, put our heads together about things, but we just sit there some days for hours and Brother Bearden just talk, tell stories about pastoring, tell stories about how God moved in their church and they would have building programs and how the money would come in in miraculous ways and how God did this and God did that and revivals and he would just, he would just ramble. He would just ramble and talk and we were just sitting there hanging on every word. It was absolutely fascinating because we serve the same God today that Brother Ray Bearden served in the, in, the, in the 60s and 70s and the 80s. And Brother Mullins, when Brother Buster Mullins was here, we spent hours, I'd take him back over to the apartment and we'd sit there in the truck for 45 minutes after I pulled up to drop him off and we were just talking about the goodness of God, tears running down his face. And I thought to myself, what a privilege to be able to sit and listen and hear the experiences of these older men of God. It's important that we hear the stories. It's important that the younger generation does not forget Amen. what God has done in the past. In fact, in the book of Joshua, chapter number four, when they crossed over the Jordan River, here's what God said. I want you to take 12 men, pick up a stone, and I want you to carry it over to the other side, and I want you to put up an altar. Listen to what it says. Joshua 4.20, and those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal, and he's spoken to the children of Israel, saying, when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean these stones? 
Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which you dried up before us until we were gone over, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. He said, I want you to set up these 12 stones on purpose so that when your children say, what are these stones about? You can tell them the story of crossing over the Jordan River on dry ground. I guess the sad truth is, you get to Judges chapter number two, they forgot to tell that story. Because the generation of Joshua died and all those aged of his day died. And in Judges chapter number two, I've been preaching this the last two weeks in chapel, the Bible says there arose another generation which knew not the Lord, neither the works which he had done. What happened? The older people stopped talking about what God had done. The young people stopped asking. They stopped asking what's the meaning of these stones and the older people stopped telling the story and the Bible says there arose another generation that knew not the Lord and as a result of that, they walked in the paths of of Baal and Ashtaroth and began to worship false gods. Why? Because the aged stopped sharing their experiences of the goodness and the working and the moving of God. We see the asset of their experiences. Number two, We see the asset of their example. You senior saints that are here this morning, we're looking at you. We're watching you. Some of you think you don't matter. Some of you feel like, and not because we've said that, but maybe the devil's told you that. I don't even know why I should go to church. I can't do anything. You being here is an example to us and to the younger generation. In Psalm chapter 71 and verse number 18, if you're in here this morning and you are a senior saint, you ought to underline this verse in your Bible. Hit it with a yellow highlighter. Here's what David said in Psalm 71 verse number 18. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. David said, Lord, when I get old and gray-headed, I don't want you to take your hand off of me. I don't want you to take your presence away from me until I have shown every one of this generation just how strong and powerful of a God you are. I want to be an example. I want people to see and hear my testimony and know that even though I'm old and gray-headed and I'm feeble and I'm weak and I can't do what I used to do, that God that we serve is still just as strong and still just as powerful as he's ever been. Senior saints, be an example. I was reading Ezra chapter three. Man, I had a good time looking up the verses for this message. I just did a word study on aged and old, an old man, an older woman, and and elders, and, and all these words. I just looked at all these verses, and God just flooded my heart with this message for our senior saints because I'm hoping this message will do one, two things. I'm hoping that it will encourage you. I'm also hoping it will challenge you. Some of you act like you had not got any tread left on you and you still got a lot of tread left on you. Amen. Some of you have given up. Some of you watching live stream, you've given up. It's not time to retire, it's time to refire. The Bible tells us in Ezra chapter number three, in verse number 10, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by chorus in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he's good for his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Watch this. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy. Ancient men. Can I say it? The old people got excited. The old people began to weep and sing and shout and rejoice because they were seeing the foundation of the temple that had been laid. They remembered the first one that had been laid. Years and years and years and years ago. And now this new one was being built. And they probably had given up all hope thinking this will never happen. And they were shouting and they were rejoicing. I said the old people were shouting. 
You say, well, I'm gonna let the young people do all the shouting. You hadn't got no Bible for that. And I preached to the kids in chapel week last week and week before last that the Bible says over there in the gospels that they heard the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna. The children were given praise. And Jesus said, I have ordained, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength and perfected praise. So when I'm preaching to the young people, I tell them they need to shout amen. But I'm preaching to the senior saints this morning, and I'm telling you that you need to shout amen, and you need to rejoice, and you need to pray, and you need to be able to let your voice be lifted up, because there are people sitting around that are drawing strength from your example. Well, I have a hard time staying awake, preacher. <laughs> I got sugar problems. Well, take a shot of insulin and say hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Come on now. Do what you gotta do. Ask your husband or your wife beside you to pinch you if they have to to wake you up. If you see me sleeping, wake me up. See the asset of their example. They set an example of praise and worship and weeping and rejoicing. And a lot of older people have a hard time hearing. But we don't have a hard time hearing you. Come on now. <laughs> Reminded the old man and his wife sitting on the front porch. and He looked over at his wife and he said, I'm proud of you. She said, I'm tired of you too. <laughs> You might have a hard time hearing us, but we don't have a hard time hearing you. Saying amen and singing and rejoicing and yeah. praising God and joining us in the altar for prayer. Yeah. If you're physically able, that speaks volumes to our church. Amen. We got young people that think it's not cool to go to the altar. That's right. You're too old to care about being cool, so just get on down here and show them how to do it, amen. I was looking at this verse last night. I'm gonna, take a, I'm gonna take a detour. I want you to turn over to Luke chapter number one. I'm gonna show y'all something. This hit me last night like a ton of bricks. Luke chapter number one. We're getting upon the Christmas season. I want you to get this right here. This helped me. Boy, this encouraged me. This was a blessing to me right here. Luke chapter number one. Don't you see this? Verse number five, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, this is the father of John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. A certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. Watch this. And they both were well now stricken in years. That's King James Version meaning they were getting on up there. All right? Look at what it says. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. I had to stop right there last night and just take a break. Here's a man the Bible says is well stricken in years. Here's a man whose wife is also well stricken in years. And look how the Bible describes them in verse number six. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And he was still executing the priest's office before God. Verse nine, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. So there was a whole bunch of people that were out there praying, but guess what triggered their prayer? Come on now, this old man executing his office and doing what he could even at an old age. They waited on him to do what he was gonna do before they did what they were supposed to do. I wonder how many people in our church are waiting for some of our senior saints to do what they're supposed to do before they're gonna do what they're supposed to do. Come on now. And I know what some of y'all are saying. Don't you only beat up on these old people, preacher. Don't beat up on these old people. Well, I'm not beating up on them. I'm gonna let God do a little bit of that because I'm gonna show you something right here. And look at what it says. And God, God began to appear. The angel appeared to me in verse number 11. An angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar 
And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Thou shalt call his name John. Look at verse number nine, look at verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. The angel answered, said unto him, I'm Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these things. And because thou, and, and behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. I thought, my goodness, here's an old man. The Bible says he's living right and doing right. His wife's living right and doing right. He's serving God, executing his duty, but he wasn't too old for a little bit of chastisement. He wasn't too old for a little bit of rebuke. Come on now, stay with me. Some of y'all just reached up and turned your hearing aid off. Turn it back on. Turn it back on. Here's an old man serving God. You know, the angel said, because I told you what I was gonna do and you didn't believe, you're not gonna be able to say a word for the next nine months. I know Elizabeth was probably excited about that. I thought, my goodness, here's an old man. And God said, you doubted me. I'm gonna deal with you. He was not too old for God to work on. Come on now. They say you can't teach old dogs new tricks, but we're not talking, I'm not preaching to a bunch of old dogs. I'm preaching to saints of God this morning. Look at Luke chapter number two. Man, there's so much in here. By the way, by the way, there's so much in these verses. I wish I had the time. It talked about Zacharias being an old man in verse number 36 of chapter one. It says, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she shall, has also conceived a son in her old age. I mean, there was no question that both of them were on up in years. And yet God did something amazing with both of them. Get over to Luke chapter number two. We find the story here of a man named Simeon in verse 25. They took Jesus when he was eight days old. They took him down to the temple for the purification for the, to be circumcised. And the Bible says in verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Watch this. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Here's an old man that still, now I know this is going to mess up some of y'all's theology. I ain't going to argue with you about it. You say, well, the Holy Ghost didn't come until Acts 2. I'm in Luke 2. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost was upon him. You've got to just deal with it. Verse number 26, it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. There we go again. That he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, here we go again. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. I don't know how old he was, but God had already said, I'm gonna let you live long enough to see the Messiah. You're gonna be able to see him with your eyes. And the Bible says that he took the baby, Jesus, and he held him up in his arms and said, all right, now you can take me on home to glory. I've done seen what I need to see. Look at Anna, verse number 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Anser, who was of a, she was of a great age. Is that what your Bible says? And had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. She was a widow of about four score and four years old. She's 84 years old. Watch this, which departed not from the temple. Some of y'all need to understand that in your Bible. Well, I'm too old to go to church. Anna wasn't too old to go to church. Right. 84 years old, and she departed not. Yeah. I just lost some of you. But served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Preacher, I'm too old to do anything. I'm too old to go to church. I'm too weak. I'm too feeble. I'm too frail. You know what makes me sad and a little bit mad is that how many of our senior saints Dr. Fauci got out of church. What makes me sad and a little bit mad is how many of our senior saints Dr. Fauci has got out of church. I mean, Zachariah was an old man. Elizabeth was an old woman. And Simeon was an old man. And Anna was an old woman. And guess where they were? In the house of God, serving, working, executing their duty. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, being led by the Holy Ghost. 
Come on now. There's no expiration date on the spirit-filled life. Hey, Grandpa, look up in here. Grandma, look up in here. There's no expiration date on being spirit-filled. No expiration date on it. Well, I'm gonna pass it off to the kids. You'll pass it off. We were patting you on the chest with a shovel and not before. We we'll need you to quit and sit down and give up. We need you to help. Be an example. Is everybody okay? I'm out of time and I'm out of breath. And you're probably out of patience. But I got one more point. Titus chapter number two, we see the asset of their exhortation. You get over to Titus chapter number two, Paul is writing a letter to a young preacher named Titus. And he gets over to Titus chapter number two, turn over there right quick, I'm trying to, I'm trying to land this plane, but it's still got a little bit of fuel left in the wings, amen. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, chapter two of Titus, verse one. And here's what I want you to teach, here's what I want you to preach, here's what I want you to say, Titus. I'm telling you what to preach. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave. That means serious. That's what it means, serious. Serious about the things of God. Serious about the church. Serious about revival. Serious about what God wants to do in this church and what God wants to do in this country. I think we blame the young people way too much. We blame the young people way too much for a lot of stuff that us older people need to take responsibility for. You need to be preaching that older men be sober and grave and temperate. That means self-control. Sound in faith. Sound in faith. Not sound in fear. Some of y'all, the best thing you could do was throw your television out in the backyard. Because the media is selling fear by the truckload and some of y'all are still buying it. You say, but I saw it on the news. That's your first clue, that it's a pile of hooey. Turn it off. They're getting rich, scaring everybody to death. Sound in faith, the Bible says. The aged men be sound in faith. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that's not just to the young people. That's not just to the middle age. That's to all God's people. God hath not given us the spirit of fear. If you've got the spirit of fear, that is not of God. Preacher, you need to be patient. You need to be understanding. It's been nearly two years. I'm about out of patience. I'm about out of patience. Oh, you know, they got this Omicron. Not one person, according to the World Health Organization, has died from Omicron. And the, and the governor of New York has already declared a state of emergency. Not one person, even in Africa, has died of it. But see, they can sell fear. Keep everybody all hemmed up in their house and scared to death. Afraid to move, afraid to talk, afraid to soul win, afraid to go to church, afraid to go to the altar, afraid to hug somebody's neck. The aged men sound in faith and in charity and in patience. Number three, the aged women likewise. Titus, I want you to preach to the old men and I want you to preach to the older women. The aged men, women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. I'm gonna go ahead and say this because probably nobody else ever will in your lifetime but there ain't nothing no more disgusting than an old lady trying to look sexy. We ain't interested in seeing what your mama give you. Cover yourself up and be an example and a pattern of holiness, come on now. I said you won't ever hear that nowhere else, but you just heard it this morning that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Verse four, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. You see, he's kind of assuming that they, that they love their husbands and that they love their children. And they're therefore qualified to teach the younger ladies to be discreet and chaste Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. What's Paul saying? Paul said the aged is an asset to the New Testament local church 
because of the exhortation that they can bring to the table to teach the younger Christians. Come on now. I'm still in the Bible. If I've deviated from the Bible, you tell me. I'm still in the book. Right, right. Some of y'all looking at me like, no, he didn't, girlfriend. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm out of time. But we see that the asset, the younger people that are struggling with things shouldn't look at a senior saint struggling with the same thing. You say, well, I haven't been saved that long. I'm older, but I'm a new convert. Well, we'll let you off the hook for a couple more days. But you need to get with the program because we're looking at you. Your experience, your example, and your asset to the ministry of exhortation. You know I love you, don't you? You older people, I love you. That's why I'm not going to let you sit down. I'm not going to let you quit. You better watch me. I'll light a fire under you. You better be careful. We need you. And if you got mad at what I preached this morning, go home, take some blood pressure medicine. You'll be all right in a few hours. You'll be all right. I preach the truth to you this morning. Calvary Baptist Church loves our senior saints. We're sitting in a building that was built by our senior saints. We're sitting on a piece of property that was bought by the senior saints. And we're preaching the Bible that was delivered to us, once delivered unto us by our senior saints. And we're told to earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. We're doing our best to carry the torch on. We need you to help carry it as well. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, musicians are coming, altars open. If God spoke to your heart this morning, would you come? Maybe you're here this morning and you just, the devil has convinced you that you're out of gas. There's nothing else left for you to do except just sit around and watch the younger people carry it on. Let me tell you something. There's plenty to be done. There's plenty to be done. We need you to be an example. We need you to be an example to these younger people of faithfulness. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much shall be required. Our senior saints have been given more than anybody else. They're going to have a lot to give an account for at the judgment seat. Would you obey the Lord this morning? If you're here this morning and you've never been born again, never been saved by the grace of God, we would love to take a Bible this morning and come sit down beside you and in just a few minutes show you from the Word of God how you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die. Would there be somebody here this morning that would slip your hand up, preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm a blood-bought, born-again child of God. Please pray for me. Anybody, anywhere? If you're watching the service online, there's a number on the screen. You can call, text that number. Text that number, say, I need to talk to somebody. Somebody will call you here in just a few minutes to take a Bible over the phone and show you how you can be saved. We need revival in our church, not just with our youth group, not just with our students in our Christian school, not just in our singles department. We need revival at Calvary Baptist Church in our senior saints.